Well, welcome back to Aquino, the Ontario Regiment Museum's annual event. And I've been pleasantly surprised to find something modern, uh, very modern indeed, in the museum collection. I'm actually honestly surprised as well. So what I'm sitting in here is a Lab 3. It's basically a Moag Piranha uh, variant, which is built locally here in Canada. This is a thoroughly modern vehicle. Uh, the seat, as you can see, is powered, which is unusual. This, it doesn't go forwards and backwards. The pedals go forwards and backwards. An interesting touch. But to drive it, uh, this is basically a big car. So you see this is an 8x8. The two forward axles will steer, which is an improvement over the predecessors, which are just six-wheel drive vehicles. So if you lost a wheel, then you were kind of hosed. But in this one, you'll, you'll keep going. The Lab 3 is being removed from service. It is being replaced by the Lab 6. Uh, but this is, in effect, an infantry fighting vehicle. It has the 25mm Bushmaster up top and a two-man turret, together with the troops in the back. When you're sitting in it, you got a steering wheel, you got a transmission lever, just PRND 54321, as you would expect. There is a digital compass and navigation system, a, a whole ton of items on the dash on the left, but the important ones are basically just the kilometers per hour and revs per minute. So this thing would top out at 100. The crew here had it running 80 kilometers an hour recently, which must have been amusing and fun. Sadly, I will not know the joy. But since this is such a new vehicle, I thought it'd be interesting to go around and have a look at some of the fun controls that we ordinarily don't get to see on World of Tanks videos. So it turns out that opening up the engine compartment on this is a piece of cake. And without even asking, the guys just went, open up the hood, open up the compartments, so they've opened up the hood and we can see the Caterpillar inline six cylinder turbocharged engine cranks out about 350 horsepower. Straight back, you're gonna have a transmission. You got an air filter on the right there. Radiators are just above the transmission. It's, I'm told, a bulletproof engine. The guys love it. And the only complaint they have is if you hit the brakes too fast, the engine stops because the sensor thinks you've run out of oil. Okay, the crew compartment of the RV. Eight guys would sit in the back here in addition to the three permanent crewmen on bench seats. Now I'm being told by my subject matter expert here that uh, this bench seat type indicates a very early lav and this vehicle was used for training instead of operational deployment. When you went on overseas, you had more blast seats and so on. But uh, so eight guys traveling in relative quiet and comfort compared to a tracked PC. I note one of the comfort features directly opposite me is what well, they call it the CBU, the cooking and boiling unit. The rest of us would call it a boiling vessel or a kettle or a ration heater in American. And on an American vehicle, it's located in exactly the same place. I mean, why, uh, why mess with what works? The back ramp you can see is two chains and there is another chain holding it up. And depending on just how much stretch you give the chain, you can have the back ramp completely horizontal and it'll work as a, a table, chair, or even your bed space if you happen to have enough room and there aren't too many people hanging around. As I look forward, again, this is a modern vehicle. So you have a repeater camera for the day sight for the gun so that the guys in the back, affectionately known as the Gibbs, uh, are able to get some situational awareness as to what's going on outside. So just the, the addition of the camera will give you great situational awareness so that you know what to expect. As soon as the ramp drops and the section gets out, you know how to orient yourselves, you know who's gonna go uh, left or right, you know who's gonna aim at whatever. Very handy to be able to plan in advance. Little item to the right of this nav system, identical to that found over, up front with the driver. GPS lets you know where you are, where you're going, can also be used to give you waypoints. Dome lights, as you would expect. You'll note up here we have vents for an extremely effective air conditioning system. So they had this running uh, yesterday and the aircon system works fantastically. And I would have murdered somebody for one in my Bradley in the desert or in my tank in the desert. Uh, fire detection systems for uh, automatic fire extinguishing. And then you have the cage, unlike a Bradley, where you get into the cage from the direct back. There's just a little letterbox pass-through port. Otherwise, you gotta go around the side or get in the top. But uh, if you're gonna go into battle in an air-conditioned wheeled armored vehicle, it's probably a pretty comfortable way of doing it. 
Right, so the turret of the Lav 3, remember I used to command Bradley's after I commanded Abrams, is going to be very similar. Now, subject to the criterion that this is not a real gun, and so I don't have the receiver and the feeder back here, but otherwise I can look at the panel, I can look at the layout, and I can generally figure out how to operate it. So, one of the first differences between this and a Bradley is the 25mm stowage is center between the two crewmen on this vehicle. On the Bradley, I had a much larger bin towards the front of the turret basket, but it did take up a little bit of my leg space as well at the counter. So you'd load your primary ammunition stowage, which uh, apparently tended to be armor piercing, through here. The secondary stowage, you can see the diagram on the side of the bin here, is to the front. So you would rotate the turret off to the left side and they would load the ammunition straight through the driver's hatch. There are two feed chutes mounted for just like on the Bradley except uh, this time they load up towards the uh, the bottom of the gun whereas the Bradley because the ammunition bins are on the side they would come in from the side of the uh, of the turret without any great complication. However, I am told that it is just as annoying and fiddly on the Canadian vehicle as it is to connect the feed chutes on the Bradley. So you either get it absolutely right and it just pops on first go, or you are there fiddling and skinning your knuckles for the next 10 minutes, cursing while you're trying to get the feed chutes to connect. It is both power and manual traverse and elevation, so we have the manual controls here. Power control is a joystick right in the middle. Commander and gunner have the same. Selectors for main gun, machine gun. Rate of fire, 200 rounds a minute, 100 rounds a minute in single shot. Primary or secondary is your ammunition feed. And there is a laser button uh, for ranging and applying the ballistic solution. So I'm being told that this will apply lead. My A2 did not apply lead, uh, only the A3s do. When you look at the control panel, again, if you look at it Bradley, you can probably figure it out as well. Indicators for the ammunition feed type, the machine gun, uh, safe arm, all, all very reasonable uh, and understandable. Again, we have a digital compass navigation system, thermal imager, daylight sight, unity sight. So power traverse is electric, it's pretty fast and I will give you a demonstration. So I gotta power it up. A couple of turret powers controls here. Turn on battle override and we're ready to go. And I have to say, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of one of these things because the chain gun is a very nasty weapon. It's also a hoot to shoot. I mean, the, the 120 is awesome. I thought the 25 millimeter was more fun. When you get to the outside of the turret, Wire cutters, you'll find one here and one for the driver. The grenade launchers, ordinarily smoke grenades. However, I'm being told that in uh, Afghanistan, they fired high explosive rounds out of these things, which uh, should be an interesting surprise for anybody on the receiving end. Not that the 25 millimeter HE wouldn't do nasty things to you or the coaxial machine gun to the right, but uh, an impressive vehicle. Again, I'm very happy to see one operating here in Oshawa, so I think it'll be a waste if I didn't go for a spin. So I hope you found it interesting and informative. I'm going to have to have some fun.